you guys this didn't show the giant <laughs> Good morning guys and welcome to September. I cannot believe that today is September 1st. That's a big thing online, right? Is it September yet? It is September. The elk hunt has started and we're gonna get after it this morning and just go glass. We're getting a little bit of a late start, but not that big of a deal because we weren't necessarily trying to set up on anything. We just need to cover some ground, first few hours of light and glass as much as we can and just try to find a bull. I mean, it's, in these early times like the first week of september and this all depends on where you're at sometimes they're cranking and just bugling and doing everything uh the first week of september but out here it's typically the big bulls are usually roaming they're usually solo they're starting to hit with cows check cows but man they're trolling that's what i call it or tramming for cows and they're just on the move like they're never consistent they're just kind of cruising around um you know checking and finding each cow they can and then they're just on to the next one so we're gonna try to catch one that's like that and uh, see if we can't put the sneaks on it. I think we'll find some elk today. I, I got a couple pockets down here that I like. These little canyons that um, these elk hang out in. Where I killed my bull two years ago is a really popular one too. So we're just gonna go cruise around. We got the optics, we got the vortex. We'll go check stuff out. See if we can't catch up to one of these big elk. Well guys, this morning was completely dead. Did some exploring, looked at some new country, saw zero elk. These first couple weeks out here typically for us have always been pretty slow. You can get lucky sometimes do the spot and stock, but they're not calling yet. We haven't heard a single bugle, haven't seen a single elk, but we got bacon and eggs. So that's something to look forward to. Gonna throw down the tailgate kitchen. Don't worry, we have a, an attack cat at camp, so don't come touch our stuff, all yeah, right? Yeah, she'll meow you to death. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the camp chef. Thank goodness for this little camp chef. That's the good stuff right there. I love cooking the eggs in the bacon grease. Extra crispy on the bacon for Bridget. Well, I'm not sure what the game plan will be this afternoon, but I think we might go check some water holes to see if there's any water in some of these ponds and tanks. And if so, we might set up a blind. Long days out here, guys. There you go. Bacon and eggs, the best part of coming back to camp. That'll work. Get some. Are you guys about ketchup on your breakfast? I typically have ketchup on my eggs and bacon, but uh, yeah, there's some. So yeah, I'm gonna have ketchup on my bacon and eggs today. Man, I don't know what BMAC and Casey are doing. It sounds like Casey and BMAC, well, Casey got home. I think <laughs> BMAC's traveling with his wife, I'm not sure. Good morning, good morning. It is September 1, and uh, I'm definitely not out elk hunting. I remember growing up, September 1st, actually here in Idaho, it's August 30th. The archery, over-the-counter elk hunts open, but man, I remember every every year we, were, we would be out on September 1st chasing bulls or looking for bulls. Always seemed like it was a little early, but there was always an allure of opening day, and we've always said, you only have so many opening days in your life. More importantly, I'm at home. I just got back from Oregon yesterday. It was a long drive, 13 hours. Got all our stuff put away. Got the uh, elk taken to the, the meat locker. I have a guy here in town that does an amazing job cutting meat. Promised my wife every year that I wouldn't do continuous hunts. So once we're done with one hunt, I come home and I'm home for a few days before we start the next hunt. It's very helpful for her, obviously. We have four children at home, a small village of people. Our kids are busy, they play football, they're in cheerleading, uh, school just started, so it's a busy time of year. It's not only helpful for her, obviously, but it's very important for me. It's I get homesick really bad on these trips. I miss my kids, I miss being home with my wife, and so it's really good for me to get home recharge my batteries, help out, spend some time with them, and then off to the next hunt we go. Definitely not uh, in the woods right now. I'm at uh, Walgreens here in Pocatello, and going to buy something. Not, don't think I'm ready for this. Don't think I'm ready for this at all. Yep. I am terrified. Oh man. I have so many mixed emotions right now. 
But what I want to say is we are very, very blessed to have four wonderful kids. And I know how much joy each one of those kids have brought into our lives. And I think everybody should experience the joy or every couple should experience the joy or be able to experience the joy of bringing a child into this life when they're ready. And I feel so almost selfish right now that we were literally praying that we weren't pregnant. And it's not because we don't love every one of our children. It's because we're not ready for another child right now. And it makes me feel bad because I know people out there that are trying and have tried for so long to get pregnant and it just hasn't happened for them. Like I said, I think there are some amazing people out there that would be amazing parents and it just hasn't happened yet. So I feel bad for even hoping that, I, that we weren't gonna experience that miracle again. But we're just not ready. Like I said a couple days ago, you guys got to make sure when you hunt out of state or new states, especially Idaho, is check all the rules and regulations. So out here, you cannot shoot mechanical broadheads. So I have got a slick trick four blade and I'm setting them up right now. Bridge is pretty much going to be hunting this week, but let me show you how to put these together real quick. So you got your tip, you got two, two blades that create the four blade. So the first one you want to use is actually the one with the slit in it right here. So see that little slit in the middle? Throw that inside, push it down, and it'll, you'll kind of feel it sit in. And then line up that slit so the other one can go through it, just like that. And that one will do the same, it'll kind of sit down. So that's that's pretty much what it looks like fixed. Then you gotta take one of these little O-rings that come with, you can dig one out of that package, dang it. Right here, take that, slide it on. It'll secure those blades down there, especially once you thread it in your shaft. So I'm gonna take this fill tip off, just like that. I don't have a tool, so be careful when you do this, but just tighten that up. And there you have it. Slick Trick 4 blade. Killed an elk out here two years ago with that one. Shooting the Easton Injection Deep 6 Arrows, the 330 grain. So that'll be, that'll be a shooter right there. Well, here goes nothing for the evening hunt. We just decided to park right here. We're going to hike up the bottom right here and try to get high on some of these ridges and just glass because... We need to really, really find some elk. Cause so far we've seen none, like I've said, and we're kind of in locating mode. Haven't heard any bugles, but uh, with a little luck tonight, maybe we'll hear our first bugle, see our first elk. Bridget's ready to see something, mm -hmm. and so am I. We'll keep plugging away. I think I'm just gonna pack the binos in my backpack. Bridget will be packing the bow tonight. We'll see if we can stir something up. Here we go. Been uh, pretty much hiking through all the cow crap. There's a lot of cattle on this mountain, I can tell you that. Looks like somebody's walked up here recently. There's been a lot of people here this year, especially. I mean, it is opening weekend and Labor Day, right? Labor Day weekend? Yeah. Always makes it tough, but it's always cool to see everybody getting out and then enjoying public lands. Hopefully we start flipping things around and seeing more animals than humans. Because so far, it's always seen people. Literally, not just driving. You start glassing and you're like, people, people, people. <laughs> Well, I think they're gonna be maybe tucked away in some of these little hidden ridges up here. Only one way to know, to go look. Looks like somebody else is hunting in here too.
trying to get a lot closer. They're bounding off now. Going through there. Well, we tried to put the sneaks on those deer, but they snuck out of there. So we're gonna go to the highest, highest glassing point and do some glassing. See if we can't locate something. Should be able to see a lot of country. Still no elk, but we made it to the top. So pretty up here. Looking down on the valley. Looking up in these canyons. I was gonna sit here and glass till the last light. We saw our first elk on the hunt. Just a cow. I was running solo. Actually, she was running with a herd of deer. Decent hunts, actually. So, it's kind of weird. She was alone. But uh, at least we saw one, so we're just gonna head down to camp, fire up the camp chef, probably cook some deer steaks and mashed potatoes. Bridget's got the mash. And corn. Bacon. And onions. <laughs> I'm all about that. We got light. We're back to camp now, gonna get dinner going. So, gotta grab the camp chef. Marinate some deer steaks, and I'm doing potatoes and onions again. We're just gonna do mashed potato. Both are good, but I like crispy potatoes. We're gonna hit a couple slices of bacon to put in the potatoes. I'm gonna chop some onions. This is pretty much the best part of camping. I always look forward to coming back to camp. I always just race straight for the the Yeti, get the food out, and start cooking it. Thank goodness Bridget had this uh, camp chef set with a pretty good chopping knife and I got some deer steaks from my Colorado buck last year so that'll be good as well throwing the potatoes and the onions on there all right there's the deer steaks I hit it with some black pepper some salt some grill mates Montreal steak and my personal favorite this is Spadel beef marinade and seasoning I love that stuff the uh, bacon here with the potatoes Bridget's not doing mashed anymore so I cut her up one what do we have here what on earth are you hello <laughs> anybody name that critter in the comment section below I think I've seen these before. They definitely, they come out at night. Is that like a Mormon cricket? Whoa, 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 whoa. Go, go, go. It's just like a tractor, just going over everything. All right, guys, so I'm about to throw the steaks on. Potatoes are getting close. Like I said, they're hard to cook in this, this pot. They're not getting crispy, they're more getting soft, which is pretty good. Steaks are ready to rock and roll, so I'm gonna heat the pan and throw those on uh, the skillet side. Oh, I didn't make the cool noise I thought. I'm gonna throw a couple deer steaks on here. I might as well throw all four of them on here. Whatever I don't eat, I can have for lunch tomorrow. There we go. I don't know where this cut of meat is off. If I had to guess, it'd probably be off the hind quarter somewhere. There's dinner. I've got more steak, but not much room on the plate because I got a massive heaping pile of potatoes. Bridget's digging in. There's her dining table. You ready for bed? <laughs> All right, guys, we're all ready for bed. Another day has come and gone. September 1st, right? Getting all the days mixed up. Tomorrow's September 2nd. I think we're going to wake up a little bit earlier and go sit the blind. We actually snuck out to a water hole tonight, or this afternoon, and put up Bridget's blind. Like I said, it's going to be tough. You never know what's going to happen. Sitting the blind, there's clearly a chance because they do go there to water. A lot of people on Instagram have asked, like, go sit water and typically the elk hit him at night because it seems like every water hole out here is right next to a main road uh, because the majority of the water is on uh, cattle troughs. I think we'll go sit one, just take a chance. The nice thing about sitting at a water hole in a blind is if they do come in, you usually get a pretty good uh, opportunity, you know, 40 yards or less. So we set up the blind, I think, from the trail about 20 yards and from the water hole about 40, 45 yards, which isn't bad. We'll uh, hope for some big bulls to get thirsty tomorrow morning. It's plenty hot lately, and uh, hopefully something comes in. But till then, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe, guys. Again, we're doing these videos every single day, so hope you guys are having fun. Hope you guys are tagging along. So we'll see you in the morning. Bye.